Greetings from Olympia. This is your state representative, Kerry Kandata, and it is now week three of the short session, which again, we hope remains a short session. Lots going on this week. A lot of bills being floated and a lot of bills that have big concerns for the 12th district and small business, which is what I have been representing here. Uh, of course, I do everything, but small business is my passion and they are literally trying to be erased from the planet with what these folks uh, over here want to do. A $12 minimum wage, really? Uh, somebody thinks that's going to benefit anybody, I can tell you it's not. It will close a lot of small businesses. It will play right into the hands of the big corporations because Starbucks can absorb a minimum wage and raise their prices. The rest of our small businesses just won't be able to do that. And of course, agriculture will have the same problem. What's more important to remember is when you move the minimum wage up, it doesn't just move the minimum wage. It moves all wages higher. And of course, that's what the proponents say. All the wages will go higher, but it what expense. If you raise the price of gas by 30 to 40 percent, do you think people will buy more of it or potentially save gas and not buy as much? The same thing happens here. If you're going to increase the cost of labor by 30 percent, you're going to see a drastic reduction in jobs. Now look, we already have that problem. Youth unemployment in this state is very high. It's between fourth and fifth in the nation, and yet we have a very, very positive economy. Why is that? because of the combination of the highest minimum wage already in the $9 bracket and payroll taxes that are among the highest in the nation and a B&O tax that taxes people on gross sales, not on gross profit. Therefore, uh, it's a lethal cocktail, especially for a small margin business. What are these people over here thinking of any of them taking an economics class? Do they really understand the basics? Well, I do. And we're going to fight every one of these measures because not only are they doing all that, they will have bills that have mandatory paid vacation for all employers over four, over four employees, paid vacations. How about paid sick leave also? No, they're not, that's not two bills in one. That's two separate bills. So we're talking about a $12 minimum wage. We're talking about automatic paid vacations, automatic paid leave. What's next? Are we gonna have free trips to Europe? I don't know, but it's getting a little out of control here and I think you folks have let me know that, that this is getting crazy. Well, the good news is most of these probably won't move out. Thanks to the Senate coalition, we have a great firewall to stop these crazy ideas from happening and crushing our small businesses across the state of Washington and our agricultural markets. So we can only hope they hold the line. Even on the House side, I really doubt that some of these members on both sides of the aisle, many of these members would want to vote for these, these type of things. Remember, these are the very policies that absolutely sunk Chicago and Detroit and the Midwest. These are the kind of things that have sunk Europe, that are creating havoc. Do you realize the youth unemployment rate in most of Europe is over 25 to 30 percent? It's 50 percent in some of these countries that have similar policies. People aren't going to hire people when it costs that much. So let's hope that cooler heads prevail and this is just uh, some kabuki theater at this point, but you never know. And we have to be very, very diligent in our defense of the American open markets, free markets that work so well, and yet we move the other direction. Do you know that things are so bad in Detroit right now based on these same type of principles that they're asking for 50,000 visas to bring foreigners in to repopulate the city? And Detroit is the perfect example of where the progressive agenda has been used for 30 years. It's a dead end, it's a nightmare and we'll do everything we can to stop it from happening to this great state. We have too much to look forward to. We've got some great potential uh, new businesses coming online across the state, and the state of Washington, more than anyone, has the potential to lead the way on economics, but not with these policies, not with these ridiculous policies that absolutely destroy the very fabric of innovation in small business. So am I a little fired up this week? You bet. We're going to take this on head on. We're going to turn this ship around and we are going to make Washington the most prosperous, best growing economy in the United States. That's our goal on the Republican side. And we can do it by raising all the boats. We can make everyone better off by doing it our way. We know it works. It's been done before. I'll give you one last example before I go. Scott Walker, the governor of Wisconsin, has been highly criticized so much to the point by these progressive folks that they tried to recall him. He made it through the recall. You better take a look at his statistics. He's turned Wisconsin around just like we need to do in Washington. His numbers are phenomenal. Unemployment is dropping like a stone. New businesses are opening everywhere. This guy's got it going. Now I'm not just singling him out. I'm just telling you the policies work. 
He's proven it, and we need to go down that same path. But this is not going to happen here until we make some changes in, our, in the makeup of this group in the legislature. And of course, the Senate coalition is our best bet right now for holding the line. Well, there it is. Crazy week here. There's other bills, too, that you're going to be concerned with. We'll talk more about that next week. But so far, we're holding the line. Stay tuned. This is your state representative, Kerry Condotta. I'll see you next week.